It's been a great year for new games, but here are our favorite games of 2021. We probably say this every year, but that went quickly, didn't it? Although, admittedly, we spend most of it head down in all manner of gaming worlds, from being shrunk down in a child's bedroom to trying to escape giant vampire ladies with our sanity intact. It's hard to narrow all the releases down into our absolute favorites, but seeing as this video exists, you can tell we somehow managed it. That's right, we're going to take you through our favorite games this year, so you can make sure you haven't missed any unmissables off your list. Before we jump in, let us know your top games of this year. We'll let you decide how many you can narrow that down to. And make sure to subscribe and hit that notification bell so you can go into 2022 knowing you'll never miss another video from us. Right, let the games begin. After Hazelight Studios secured their title as Masters of the Co-op Experience with 2018's Prison Break Action Adventure A Way Out, we knew the studio's second title was going to be something special. It Takes Two is a family drama where two players take on the roles of parents May and Cody as you shrink down like a reverse Honey I Shrunk the Kids and have to figure out how to get back to your normal size. It's an absolute co-op joy, full of puzzles that hinge on communication, competitive mini-games, hidden easter eggs and set-piece levels that left us awestruck throughout. When Sable released back in September, it did so quietly. There was no huge fuss made about this gorgeous indie open world, it just appeared with little fanfare with its glorious sunset hues and Japanese Breakfast Club soundtrack and blew us away. It's a game about deciding who you want to become and how to become it. It's a sprawling gem of a game that stayed with us long after we finished playing. Deathloop was one of our most anticipated titles of the year, and it did not disappoint. The retro sci-fi world was a violent paradise. We kind of understood why the partygoers never wanted it to end. We had a lot of fun. The roster of guns and powers kept us sharp, slaying everyone in sight, or at least trying. But it's the twisting time loop mystery at the heart of it that we were drawn to. Gradually lining up each day for the perfect killing fest was a delight. Hand us a gun, we're going back in. The eighth installment to the Resident Evil series ducked through a doorway and onto our screens with Village, featuring a folk horror twist on the usual undead and puzzles. Werewolves, ventriloquism, and of course vampires, Village had it all. The story of Ethan Winter's struggle to survive and the snowy setting really set this apart as one of the best horror experiences of the year. Resident Evil Village was terrifying. We had to play with the lights on a fair few times, but we found ourselves constantly compelled to move forward, even when stuff like this showed up. September was a big one for new releases. We here at Logitech G have always had a soft spot for the Life is Strange games. We've turned back time with Max, tried to control our brother's powers as Sean, and now as Alex Chen, we got to glimpse the deepest emotions of those around us with the power of empathy. True Colors is a standout game even for Life is Strange that's all about taking the time to get to know people before you judge them. All is not what it seems in Life is Strange True Colors, except the soundtrack. That's exactly as good as we thought it would be. We weren't far into 2021 before Hitman 3 infiltrated our lives and subtly poisoned us against any other game we'd been playing. This was a ruthlessly fun addition to the franchise, which jetted us off to imposing British manor houses, intimidatingly high skyscrapers, and neon lit streets for some good old fashioned assassin fun. The game was slick, the weapons were brutal, and the costumes that we squeezed our bold barcoded boy into were iconic. It might have been released back in April, but we're still not completely over before your eyes. The narrative journey in this game is controlled entirely by your blinking, which your webcam picks up and uses to jump forward in time. Midway through a conversation with your mother? Too bad, you blinked. Just about to find out something important? Ah, 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 you blinked. 
It's a game that reminds us that life is short, but no less worth living for its briefness. It might have broken our hearts into a million pieces, but it was definitely worth it. Richard. What? That's the cutest thing I've ever seen. Yeah, what's wrong with that? Eastwood definitely takes the prize for one of the most beautiful games of the year, despite only existing in pixels. This is the kind of post-apocalypse we'd actually want to be a part of. The world we know has crumbled into beautiful disrepair, with nature taking over the rotting skeleton of the past. Plus, we fell in love with Sam and John the moment we met them. They're the kind of family that proves you can find love anywhere. Eastwood is an exciting adventure full of hope and heart, and a whole lot of frying pan action. Not only can we confidently say that Boyfriend Dungeon was our favourite dating sim of this year, we can also say that it's one of our favourite dungeon crawlers of this year too. Boyfriend Dungeon blended both to create a game all about fighting with your weapon of choice, and then taking said weapon of choice on a date. It's like nothing else we've played in the best possible way. Plus, it doesn't limit you to monogamy or heterosexual partnerships. Nice to know that our weaponry is open-minded, eh? Death's Door was a delightful surprise in July. There are many Zelda-like dungeon delvers that exist, but few that have managed to create something so wonderfully familiar and wholly unique at the same time. As a tiny crow and reaper of souls, you set off to collect your missing one, encountering morbid but charming biomes along the way, from vast echoing mansions to shadowy forests. The combat is incredibly fast, but never punishing, with gargantuan bosses that put all your crow skills to the test. Pretty clawsome. There's something a little bit scary about realising that Valheim came out this year, which means we've only had 10 months of sailing, crafting and fighting monsters in its procedurally generated open world. Valheim came out at the perfect time though, and anyone who dropped into this take on Viking purgatory, either alone or with friends, can quickly see what's so addictive about it. We took on mythical beasts, fought alongside our friends and built, uh, this. And we kept coming back for more throughout 2021. At first, Chicory A Colourful Tale seems like an adorable adventure about colouring the world. And it is that. The world is full of sweet characters to get to know and decorate. The monochrome setting is great fun to colour and puzzles cleverly link to your magic paintbrush. However, the story is so much deeper than the colouring book style might suggest. There are deep emotions explored, fear, imposter syndrome, with boss battles a culmination of all your protagonist insecurities. But Chicory shows that there's a way through it all, a bright, wonderful, colourful way that we loved exploring this year. Okay, a slight admission here. We can't say we followed the storyline of this spiritual successor to Left 4 Dead that closely, at least beyond finding out enough about the roster of player characters to know which one you wanted to fight as in the multiplayer. But that doesn't make Back for Blood any less amazing. It's the perfect four-player co-op experience where you need to rely on one another, think fast and be careful with your ammo. It also bears mentioning it was really hard. Even the easiest setting was far from a walk in the park. A walk in a zombie infested park, maybe. But we loved taking on the zombie hordes with friends this year. Huh, who needs bullets when you have bombs? Toem is definitely our favourite cosy experience of the year. It's a black and white photography adventure where you explore places as you like, snapping pictures of anything that seems interesting or at the request of local people. There are fun secrets to discover in every corner, from dancing monkeys to smiling rocks, and you'll find yourself wanting to find everything before moving on to a new area. It's the perfect chill experience to enjoy early in the morning with a cup of coffee or getting cozy at night with a hot cocoa. It has our stamp of approval. This year, Marvel's Guardians of the Galaxy arrived and got us both hooked on a feeling and high on believing. 
This ridiculously fun action adventure took us across the cosmos, and we got to feel what it was like to be Star-Lord himself. It was up to us to rouse our team of misfits before heading into a fight, make combat decisions for each member of the group, and make sure things run smooth. Ish. And of course, what with this being Guardians of the Galaxy and all, we got to do it to an excellent 80s soundtrack. What? Drax, throw him. No! Very well! Peter! It's okay, he'll land on his feet. If you'd told us last December that one of our favourite games of 2021 would be about unpacking boxes, we'd have laughed. Yet, here we are, totally obsessed with taking pixel objects out of cardboard and placing them into homes. Unpacking is a peaceful puzzle game about following someone's life through what's in their bedroom and beyond. Each item tells a story and you get to decide where it fits best in each given room, getting an intimate look at our unknown protagonist. Now, where do we pack that frying pan? We waited over a decade for this sequel, but it was absolutely worth it. Psychonauts 2 is a mind-bending platformer through people's consciousness. Raz has finally arrived at Psychonauts HQ, but things aren't as they should be with a psychic mystery to unravel by hopping into some brains. And that's where it really shines. From balancing on bowling balls through a germ-ridden city, to a psychedelic trip with each of the senses, the level design is unlike anything we saw this year. It is definitely the weirdest, anyway. The view up there is amazing. So those are our favourite games of the year. Let us know what to find your 2021 in the comments below and if you enjoyed, give this video a like. For more on our year at Logitech G, make sure to subscribe to the channel and hit the notification bell so you're always up to date.